when you get a pair of equations, what they can represent is a pair of lines. And often these lines will intersect, they'll meet somewhere, and we can find, we've got at least two ways of finding where is it that the two graphs actually meet. Does anyone want to throw out a suggestion for one of the ways they remember? Okay, so one of the ways, method one, is by using simultaneous equations. And what's lovely about simultaneous equations is you're not subject to, oh no, I didn't quite draw my graph super accurately, and so my results look very good, uh, which is something we encountered yesterday. Even with grid paper at our disposal, if the numbers are quite hard to do accurately, then your lines don't end up looking um, perfect, so you can't read accurate results off them. So simultaneous equations are lovely for that, they're much more accurate, but they have their own problems. I'll come back to them in a second. Can someone remember what's our alternative? Method two. I actually just alluded to it. It's what we used yesterday. You, you look at the graph, right? So I guess the way I would say it is you would solve them graphically. Because it requires um, a graph, we call it graphically. I suppose you could also call this algebraically. Okay? Now, uh, we're going to focus on this second one in this lesson, though we'll use the first one as necessary. Here's my reasons why. Do you remember these pictures we're drawing? They're just models. They're just models, right? In fact, I'm even going to write that to help you remember. Because they're just models, they are approximate by their very nature. So it's a bit silly to pretend that when you get a precise exact solution out of your simultaneous equations, you're like, oh, therefore I can conclude there's an exact number for this answer. When you have a model, that may or may not be true. So in some ways, it does make sense to use an approximate method for an approximate model. Okay? The other catch is simultaneous equations, unsurprisingly, requires you to know what the equations are. Frequently your models will not, like you'll, have, you'll get a graph, you'll collect some data, um, you'll draw a trend line, but you don't know what the equations are, so therefore you're, like, you're dead on arrival. You can't do anything with simultaneous equations if you don't have equations. So here are two graphs. We're going to focus on drawing them. So you'll need a set of axes. Now, because in this case we do have the equations, I'm going to teach you a little trick. You know when you draw graphs, by the way, I do say trick because you don't need this trick. So if you find it confusing, you're like, I like the old way better. That's fine. But there are some things that are very appealing about this that I will show you in a second. When you draw a graph like this, you can't just have the picture there and say, that's enough detail. There are some important values you need to put to label onto the graph. What important values might you suggest? What kind of things would I have to put on here so that I know this is, say, y equals 2x plus 1 and not like 200x minus 1? OK, yeah, I heard the word, I think. I want to find out these spots here on the x-axis and the y-axis. Where do I have my intercepts, right? So being that you always need to find out what these values are, I'm going to show you a teeny little trick that will get these values out very quickly. Okay? The trick won't make much sense the first time I show you, but stay with me and you'll see what happens. So let's try out this first equation, like so. The first thing you want to do is get all of your x's and y's on one side of the equation. On the left hand side is what we normally do. So I'm going to get them all over this side. I guess it would look something like uh, this equals negative 8. You could have written y minus 3x if you like, but I'm just writing it in alphabetical order, that's all. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I want to make the right hand side equal to 1. So if I want this to be equal to 1, I should divide by something. What should I divide by? Negative 8 will do the job. So if I divide this by negative 8, that means I have to divide the other side by negative 8. So it's going to look like this. Is that okay? So what have I done? I've got all my polynomials on the left. I want to make this so that the right hand side is 1. Now have a look at what the left hand side is going to be equal to. At the moment it's just one big fraction. This numerator on this denominator. I'm going to break it in two pieces like this. And I'm going to leave that like so. 
okay? So, pronumerals all on the left, right hand side equals to one, one last step I'm gonna do. I want there to be just an X and just a Y, just a lone X and a lone Y on those numerators. So how would I rewrite this so that there was only an X on the top? Hmm. The first thing I notice is uh, I don't need both those negatives, right? Like I can get rid of both those negatives, they cancel, is that okay? Like so. I know it looks unusual that I'm leaving that negative eight there, but I'll show you why that's there in a second. Here, if I just want that to be an x, I should divide three by something. What should I divide it by? Have a look, just, just this guy. I should divide that by three. That'll turn it into an x, right? So if I divide the top by three, then it stands to reason I should divide the bottom by three as well. So it's gonna become this. Now, that looks so strange, that looks so weird, but actually this is exactly what I want. See how there's a number that matches with the x and a number that matches with the y? These guys, this is the trick part of it, these guys are the intercepts. Negative eight is the y-intercept and eight on three, what's eight on three? Two and two, two and two thirds? Two and two thirds. That's the x-intercept. Let's just quickly draw that and I'll prove to you that that's the case. Um, x equals two and two thirds. So let's put this guy one, two, three. So two and two thirds might be about here. Okay. Oh, I'm in trouble. Y equals negative eight. I'm gonna have to draw this higher. Sorry, your graph is probably fine because you don't have to hit the bottom of the board, but I do. So I'm gonna draw this up here. One, two, three, two and two thirds. I'm suggesting to you that two and two thirds is the x-intercept and negative eight is the y-intercept. How am I gonna put that on here? If I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that's negative eight, okay? Two points is all you need to draw a graph, so grab your ruler out from here to here, draw the line straight through. Can you do that for me? Okay, now remember I said to you, well, this is a weird trick, okay? How would you do this any other way? Because you have to find these intercepts. You've been doing that for a while. How do you usually find an x-intercept? What do you do? Hmm, I'm gonna substitute something in. What should I substitute? If I wanna find a y-intercept, I should substitute in x equals zero, right? I'm just gonna use another color to do this. If x equals zero, then that gives me y equals, have a look, here's the equation I'm looking at, right? Three times zero minus eight. But what's three times zero? zero? Anything times zero is just zero. So this is negative eight, right? Which is what I already found, okay? How do I find, I've got a uh, y-intercept, how do I find an x-intercept? I, I do it the other way around. So I have to go y equals zero, x equals, okay, have a look. I don't actually have x equals, it's not the subject. I'm gonna have to rearrange a little bit over here. So this is gonna be, 0 equals 3x take away 8. So if I add 8 to both sides, and lo and behold, this is the same number I got before. Okay? So that's 2 and 2 thirds. I've got the same result both ways. What's nice about this is that often equations are in a really easy form to get this into, and this gets your x and y intercepts in one hit. They're both there, just sitting there. Whereas here you have to do two different steps. Often I forget which one's x equals zero, which one's y equals zero. So as compared to two longer steps, you've got one big step, and it gets the same result, okay? Um, whichever you feel most comfortable with. Um, I'm going to encourage you, it's always great to have more than one way to do a problem um, because that way, even if you do the one you're most comfortable with, you can check your answer another way and make sure you got the right answer, okay? Can I give you a minute to use either method, whichever you prefer, 
to find the intercepts for this guy because we need to find where they meet, right? Which means we need both pictures on the graph. So I'm going to put up my working for both of those in a minute, but I'll let you have a go first. Whichever way you like, I want to have a picture of this on the same graph. So can you take a minute to do that? 